Even if we can't control our external circumstances, we can control how we respond to the external circumstances. If your future employer doesn't know that you exist beyond the mask, you will not stand out. You will never stand out unless you start being visible. All right, everyone, we are back on the Ramped podcast. Today, we have a guest that we here at Ramped have been admiring from afar for quite some time on TikTok and LinkedIn. She's got books. She's all over the place. It is Mildred Talabi. Mildred, welcome to the show. Hey, hey, hey. I'm glad to be here, Danny. <laughs> Sweet. We are glad to have you. Before we jump into some questions for our job-seeking community, we definitely want to know who is Mildred Talabi. Oh, God. And this is a, a life how long have you got to for the answer to that? <laughs> I'll give you the short and sweet version. Mildred Talabi is, as I've had many evolutions, but what I'm currently doing now is I specialize in helping women in particular to build powerful personal brands on LinkedIn in order to increase their influence, their income, and their impact. So that applies over your business or a job seeker, which is relevant to our audience today. But my background actually before that, I trained as a journalist. I worked in the media for a bit before I transitioned into first PR, public relations and then communications. But I always had my own business on the side and it's finally come to the place where it's kind of instead of a side, having one foot in both worlds, I'm now full time doing my own thing and absolutely loving it. Well, that's amazing. Crazy cool background. We're pumped to jump in. And yes, storytelling is a huge component of what job seekers or what folks who are leveling up in their careers need. And I could probably learn a bunch of things from you on media and journalism. I am obviously a novice podcast recorder, podcast host. So potentially, I will pick your brain on that after the episode. But let's jump in. So we're at a crazy time. It is economic uncertainty everywhere. Job seekers are all over the place. There's potentially tons of jobs lost. There are layoffs. There are furloughs. We've seen this post-COVID bust or whatever you want to call it. And there's a lot of pain in the marketplace. Give me your high-level overview of what is happening right now to job seekers or folks trying to level up in their career. And what can we do about it? God, yeah. When you put it that way, oh my God, it's so depressing, <laughs> you know? So it is not the best of times for job seekers. I'm always like a glass half full kind of person. And I really do believe that even if we can't control our external circumstances, we can control how we respond to the external circumstances. So one thing that I definitely advise from the get-go to do as a job seeker is Take this opportunity to build your personal brand. Now, I know we're going to probably get into this some more in this conversation, but this is a really great opportunity to kind of think about, all right, what is it that I really want to do with my life? What do I have to bring to the table? And how can I craft a message around that and start being visible, you know, which is my tagline? How can I start being visible around that in order to not just attract the attention of potential employers, but also to kind of really make my mark in the field that I'm in because there's a lot that you can contribute and this is an ideal time to start thinking about what that is and putting that together and showing up on a platform like LinkedIn to make it happen for you. Amazing and we want to dig in on specific LinkedIn tactics at some point in this conversation because I know you have such a wealth of knowledge and books to support all that knowledge. I'm curious to know though when you talk through storytelling and building your brand when you, let's say, are somebody in the midst of a career transition, how do you even start? You hear that thrown around so much, like, okay, I need to develop my brand. A lot of times people are just uncomfortable talking about themselves. So what's the what's the first thing you do when you think about, hey, how do I communicate my story more effectively? Yeah, it, it's really funny because just before this earlier today, a friend of mine who I've been, she's been seeing what I do on LinkedIn for a long time. She's involved in marketing. She sent me a message. She's like, okay, Mildred, I've finally updated my LinkedIn profile, you know, tell me how this sounds. And then what she sent me, and I read her profile and I've messaged her on WhatsApp and I was like, I love you, but I'm going to be real honest with you. This sounds like every other marketing person's profile on LinkedIn. And what is missing in your profile right now is you is the thing that makes you different, your personality, your story. 
So this particular friend has, as well as having worked in marketing all her life, she's set up various small businesses, which has done quite well. None of that was mentioned on her profile. It was just a really kind of bog standard. This is who I am in marketing. I have X amount of experience. So my advice to her was to add that in. And that's my advice to you as you're listening to this. It's how do you start to tell your story and build your brand? It's to really look at what is it that I have done, not just within my career, but outside of that. Because that, especially when you bring in that external stuff where it's relevant, really helps you to stand out in a crowded job market. You go from being just another person in your industry to being somebody who has something more to offer, something interesting to offer, and something to bring to the table. So sit the back and think, brainstorm if you like, you know, write down, all right, what have I done in my career? What are the things that I do extracurricular outside of my career as well? And where, how do these all fit together? And then start crafting that story from there. And that is the essence of beginning your journey to personal branding. Super, super smart way to just set a framework around it, right? Like, what am I doing professionally? Who am I personally? What are my interests? Bringing that all together and coming up with that story, which a lot of times folks just put so much weight on that, right? Like, what's my story? Oh my God, that's like who I am. And they put so much emphasis on it. And I love that you just distilled it into a very simple way to get started. Okay, let's talk about folks who maybe don't have a ton of experience, professional experience in their background. What can they do if you're like entering into your career and let's say you want to go off and find any job that you may or may not be passionate about? You don't exactly know your story quite yet, but you're on your way. You're just starting that journey. What can folks do then to start building or at least start kindling that fire that becomes your personal story over time? Yes. What I didn't mention is prior to doing the LinkedIn coaching that I did now, I actually, my former business, I was a CV makeover expert. We call it CVs here in the UK, but resumes, you guys call it. But I spent about 12 years working with mid to senior level professionals to change their jobs and careers via their CVs, their resumes and their LinkedIn profiles. So my first two books address these topics. The advice that I give then and I still give now and like what I said just now, if you don't have any experience in terms of the space that you're going into, what your passions can make up for it. You know, sometimes we look at just the experience of in this particular job, and maybe you don't have experience in that particular role, but maybe you've been volunteering at your local church or whatever, you know, and you've picked up some skills there that are transferable. Every little bit counts. Do not discount anything when it comes to that whole process of, building together a picture of what you offer more than just what it says in the job description. Because for most jobs anyway, the job description is just a small window of what the job is about. And when you get into the role, you find that there's so much more to it. So it's better from the beginning to kind of look at what else can you bring to the role beyond what it just says in the job description, as well as what it says in the job description, then you will stand out more than other people. Super cool. Very, very impactful. And a good way to get started if you are earlier in your career. So we are, let's say, moving on a little bit. We have some experience. We're talking through maybe mid-career folks who are looking for that transition. They've already crafted their personal story. Now what? What's the next step after they've got that kind of locked in? Is it just go immediately to LinkedIn, look for jobs? Is it connect with all of your friends? Is it something totally different? It's all the above and then some. <laughs> and one of the things that, again, as I said, in my former business and in that when I was involved in that space a whole lot more, one of the things that rang true then that still is true today is not always about what you know, but who you know. You know, so connections, networking, all of that is going to play a really important role in getting your next role. Now, the reason LinkedIn works so powerfully is that it gives you a platform where you can make that connection en masse. It doesn't have to be one person at a time physically anymore. You can literally connect with 850 million people that are on LinkedIn at the same time, you know? So, but I say that to say, so start with the process of building your brand on LinkedIn in terms of your profile. What does your profile say about you? If someone lands on your profile page, can they get a sense of who you are, what you have to bring to the table? That's the first place. And then start making yourself visible in the right channels. 
So are there some companies, for example, that you want to work for? Are there some industries? Find them on LinkedIn, you know, start engaging with their pages, start engaging with some of the employees that work there, some of the decision makers, but also put out your own content on LinkedIn because without putting that content, you cannot be visible, you know, so put out your own content so that people, we can get an insight into what's in your mind. What do you have to share with the world? Now, when you're doing all of these things together on a consistent basis, and you can also apply for jobs, you know, applying for jobs is the most competitive way to get a job because by the time it's out there and it's advertised, you and 50,000 other people are also looking at that same job. So it's best to then is position yourself to get your next role by building up your profile and then doing these things, getting visible in the right places and also outreaching to friends, family, asking them, hey, I'm in the process of looking for my next role. This is what I'm looking for. Do you know anything that's suitable? Here's a link to my LinkedIn profile. That way your LinkedIn can serve that purpose of being your online CV, so to speak. But that does so much more than that to help you get that next role. Super, super tactical. And something we preach here at Ramped all the time is just take the side door, right? If you know somebody, it is much easier, more impactful, better to just get shuffled to the top of that list. And it's not the wrong thing to do because your peers are doing it too. Everybody is doing it. You have to use the connections you have. If you're not extra, super connected, it's okay. Like start with the ones you do have and see where that goes first. And then in combination, of course, apply. But let's see if we can get through some sort of application funnel by using a little bit of a leg up. I like that. Mildred, if you're down with it, I would love to go super tactical with you because LinkedIn is a hot button item for our job seeking community and the folks who are in our network. So if you're cool with that, I'd love to lob some quick hitting LinkedIn tactical questions at you. Sure. Let's do it. Let's do it. <laughs> All right. So let's say you've just applied to a job using that LinkedIn one click application button. What is the best thing you can do to help yourself stand out at that point in time? Okay, go and check out the person who posted the job. If it's visible, and mo more times than not, it is. It'll tell you um, who posted a job. Go and check them out. Go to their page. Because one, I say check out first, because when you go to somebody's profile, they will get a notifi notification at the end of the day, like, oh, so-and-so viewed your profile. By the way, don't do it in anonymous mode. There are people who lurk on LinkedIn and they have anonymous mode. Nobody knows who you are because you've hidden everything. That's not going to help you. Don't be anonymous. Be yourself. So once you've submitted, go and check out the person's profile. In fact, I would even say to do that before you submit. You know, try and make some kind of connection with the recruiter even if it's just like, oh, I've seen this role. It looks really interesting. I have got like a really quick question that isn't on there that would you mind? Are you available to answer? If not, no problem at all. But just that outreach, that initial outreach is good. So that's what I would recommend there once you submit your thing before and after as well. Amazing. All right. Good advice. Good advice. Keep your profiles visible. Very, very visible. All right. Let's say that you want to reach out to the talent acquisition person who is potentially screening all the resumes, what's a message you could send that person to help you stand up? That's really important because you don't want to send, <laughs> you know, hey, I would like to apply for your job. Please look at my CV because that's the whole reason they put the job vacancy out so they don't get messages like yours, you know, so that's not what you want to do. Again, you have to be strategic and you really have to think about is there an element of this role that I maybe I can do with more clarification on? Is there something that I can, a question I can potentially ask, something to make you stand out? Or is there, you can ask things like, okay, so what, is there a criteria that would make somebody not suitable for the role? So you want to be asking them something that's not obvious from the job description, because if it's obvious from the job description and you're asking them, they're just going to think you haven't bothered to read it. And that actually would look even worse, you know, <laughs> of you than had you not reached out to them at all. So look for the non-obvious and use that as a point of conversation in reaching out to that person. Super helpful. Super helpful. All right. Let's say you are desperately trying to find jobs that haven't hit the open market 
yet. Is there anything you can do on LinkedIn to find and surface up those jobs before they hit that mass application funnel? This is where who you know really comes into it, you know, and the more time you spend building your network on LinkedIn when you don't need it, the best time to build your network and your personal brand is when you don't need it, you know, so you're doing it kind of calm and casual. But even then, the next best time is right now, <laughs> you know, so it's really about reaching out. So if it's within that organization and you know um, what the organization is, look at who their employees are, because they will tell you on the company page how many employees there are. And then just start going through the list and seeing if there's any like mutual connections that you have with anybody in the list. If there is, you can ask you if you have, for example, if you have a first degree connection, someone you're directly connected to who is connected to somebody else who works for that organization, you can ask the person, the first degree connection, would they mind doing an intro? You know, so I would like to know if there's any job vacancies coming up. I love this company. I'd love to work here. And I noticed that you're connected to so-and-so at this company. Would you mind introducing me? So, and do that to as many as possible. Look for different roads in as much as possible and just guerrilla tactic it. And don't feel no shame doing it either because it's okay. This is your future that you're fighting for here. So it's well yeah. worth doing. Yeah. <laughs> 100%. Increase the top of funnel. The worst you hear is a no. And look, yeah. how it's all, unfortunately, it's going to be a no either way if you mm -hmm. mass apply, right? You're going to get that 90, 95% rejection rate. So may as well just put in your absolute best up front and accept that like you did your best and the rest is not up to you. Really good advice. Okay, last one on LinkedIn, but it's more of a general catch-all. Give us the goods. What is one trick or tip that folks are missing that they should be using today to make themselves relevant on LinkedIn? Oh, 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 oh. just one? How can you ask me to give one? <laughs> I wrote a whole book. <laughs> <laughs> we, wanna, we, want, we, want, we want people to find the book as well, of course, of course. Like, yeah, Start Me Invisible is the book. So the, the one trick would have to be the title of the book, which is my mantra. And that is that whole thing of start being visible. If we don't know that you exist, if your future employer doesn't know that you exist beyond the mask, you will not stand out. You will never stand out unless you start being visible. Start waiting for permission to start using LinkedIn to amplify your voice. That's what I posted about today. A lot of people in the corporate space like they wait for permission, you know, I can't do this because of my job or whatever reason. It's really important to know that your job title belongs to your employer, but your personal brand belongs to you. It's your job to craft this, to shape it and to use it to open doors for your next role. So start today building that personal brand on LinkedIn. You do that simply by updating your profile on a practical level, updating your profile, being clear who your target audience is, posting content and then strategically engaging with the right people on LinkedIn on a consistent, regular, I'm about to say daily, but I know some people will feel challenged if I say daily. Daily, do I have to be on LinkedIn every day? Okay, I will give you the weekends off. <laughs> yeah. You know, but apart from that, every day. <laughs> amazing, amazing. Well, it's a good segue because our audience needs to know about two things. We need to know about start being visible and we need to know about the visible woman tribe please give us the goods tell us what those two things are all about and why you started them and why you're continuing down that road sure so so start being visible is my fourth book as i said the first two books were about job seeking the third one's the children's but this one is my book that i wrote it came out in oh i have to think now 2020 mid september 2020 is when it came out and it's all about how to build your personal brand on LinkedIn, how to raise your profile, build your brand, you know, to advance your career or business. So, and that's my mantra. I'm always preaching about start being visible. Start today. It means today, today, today. So that's the book. You can get that on Amazon. You can get that on my website, startbeingvisible.com forward slash book. And the Visible Woman Tribe is my community of women who are committed to this journey of not hiding, but being visible themselves. So actually our motto is to raise the visibility of female leaders in every industry. And here's an exclusive for you, Danny. We, I will be launching a podcast to this very effect. 
very, very, very soon. So keep keep your eyes peeled for the Visible Women Tribe podcast coming soon, to, which is all about raising the visibility of female leaders in every industry. Well, we cannot wait for that. We're definitely going to shout it out in the show notes if it's available. And if not, please keep an eye out because Mildred packs in so much guidance in all of her free content and her up-level content is exceptional. So please check out all of that. And what a mission, Mildred. I'm so happy that you're putting that out there. And for anybody who's interested, definitely check it out. I will segue one last time. It is the time for the final question on the Ramp Podcast. We've asked all our guests, all four seasons of the Ramp Podcast. But if you could go back in time now, given the benefit of hindsight, what advice would you give yourself as you are entering into your career? Oh, I'm going to really sound like a broken record here, <laughs> you know, but you're probably going to know what I'm about to say. I only I guess. Wish, <laughs> yes, I know, right? I only wish I knew early on just how important it is to intentionally build my personal brand and start being visible on LinkedIn because it has absolutely revolutionized my but it did in my career and it's done even more so in my business so if i was to start again i would start that journey intentionally a whole lot earlier than i did so that would be my advice start today today is always the best day if you haven't done it yesterday well it's clear that you are working at that you have over fifty thousand linkedin followers which is quite impressive we're honored to be with you i know i probably know the answer to this one too but before we let you go, where can folks find you, Mildred? On Twitter. Only joking. <laughs> what is Twitter? We don't talk about that for our form. Um, <laughs> no, no. Yeah. X, X now. They changed their name. They don't even like to talk about themselves that way. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> old news. <laughs> but, um, yes, you can definitely find me on LinkedIn. Please reach out and connect. Let me know you heard me on the Raft podcast so I know who you are. And you can also check out my website, MildredTalabi.com, which has everything about what I'm about. So either place is absolutely fine. Well, Mildred, it has been a true pleasure and an honor to be with you. You have such a wealth of knowledge and we just scratched the surface. So we'd love to have you back on a future episode. Continue, continue to pump out all of that great information for women, for job seekers, for folks at a career transition, for folks needing up-leveling in their personal branding. It is clear, clear to me after this episode that you must, must get out there, must be visible and do it early and often. So thank you so much. We are blessed to have you on the RAM podcast and we hope to do it again. Wonderful. Thank you so much for having me, Danny. It's been absolutely great meeting you and joining your community today. Wonderful. Talk soon.